One of the most famous modern examples of a long take in cinema is in the film 1917, directed by Sam Mendes. And there is no better way to tell the story than with one continuous shot. Three, two, one, go! The entire movie is crafted to look like it's taken in one long continuous shot, but it's actually not. That's right, we were all lied to. <laughs> it's all an illusion, it's all movie magic. It's quick camera movements, hiding behind random objects, and of course some incredible editing. It's extremely difficult and impressive to make this kind of movie. But you know what's even more impressive and difficult? An actual long take, an actual unbroken continuous shot. Now you might be thinking, surely no one's managed to pull that off for an entire movie that's an hour and a half to two hours long, right? Well, get to know Victoria, everyone. The German film directed by Sebastian Schipper, Skipper? I don't know how to say it. Shot in a single long take that lasts the entire 138 minutes. That's right, the entire movie was taken in one shot. Isn't that incredible? Wouldn't you look at 1917 a little bit differently now that you know this information? Yeah, that's how I feel. I feel annoyed and I feel like we need to give credit where it's due. So today we're going to talk about the illusion of the long take. Are you stealing? I do not know. Perhaps tomorrow. Perhaps tomorrow I don't go to work. It's a friend of mine, really. <laughs> The entire movie was shot in a single take. The script was just 12 pages long, with most of the dialogue being improvised. So the rehearsal time and preparation, all of that goes out the window the moment the camera starts rolling. And it's down to the actors and the camera operators to create something magical. Even for 1917, a movie that looks like it's taken in one continuous shot, but it's actually numerous takes stitched together, the cast and crew had to rehearse their every move for six months. I mean, we rehearsed the film for, for six months and then we shot for another three, four months yeah. after that. And writers had to write the scripts according to the time it took to do each take. It was all about timing and it had to be perfect. The camera work was a mix of steady cam, handheld shots and wire rigs, all working together to keep the action fluid and engaging. Now, my main problem with the movie is that although it's very impressive technically, I do think the technical aspect has taken away from the emotional aspect. I feel like they focus too much on the technicalities and oh, it's like one long take and all those lies that I feel like we didn't actually engage with the characters. The characters are usually seen at a distance and the camera doesn't really show the facial expressions it doesn't really focus on that and although Sam Mendes actually intended to make an engaging movie like this I feel like in my opinion he didn't do it that well for me engagement is very important this is why I think a much better example of a movie that used the same technique but also engaged the viewer is Birdman can I talk to you for a second yeah what's up did you find another actor no okay well Mike's available. He is? Mm -hmm. Mike who? I thought he was doing the thing. He was. He quit. Or got fired. Mike who? Which is it? Quit or fired? Well, with the mic, it's usually both. Birdman does an incredible job at creating this seamless illusion and engaging the viewer at the same time. The technique is the same as 1917, except the camera moves in and out much more. It feels more fluid and less robotic and limited. And most importantly, the technicality of it isn't as obvious and in your face as 1917. I feel like Birdman does a much better job at engaging the viewer and immersing us in the story and the character's life and mentality. Even though this is also just an illusion, this is numerous takes stitched together, it's not one long take, but I do think it's a much better example of an immersive story, if that makes sense. Even though the film is set within a confined, almost claustrophobic space versus 1917, which spans across these wide open battlefields, the camera movements in Birdman feel more fluid. Here, the long take isn't used just for the sake of being impressive. It actually serves a purpose purpose, and that purpose is to get inside the head of its main character. It mirrors his mental state. Let's talk a little bit about the history of the long take. One of the most notable and earliest attempts of doing a long take in cinema is of course by the legend Alfred Hitchcock in his 1948 movie Rope. You can't have everything, and we, we did do it in the daytime. All right now, Philip? Yes. Of course, this was almost impossible at the time, but it was the earliest attempt to actually do a long take. 
Cameras at the time could only hold about 10 minutes of footage, so in order to do a long take or create that illusion, Hitchcock used several techniques. For example, cutting when the camera moved behind objects or characters to hide the transitions, which is basically what Sam Mendes did in 1917, except he did it in 2019. Now here's where it gets super interesting. Can you believe there's an even earlier attempt to do a long take? That's right, in 1914 in this Italian silent film. So in all of these early silent films, the camera would usually just stay in one place and it's the characters and the objects within the frame in front of the camera that would move. So all you had at the time was a stationary camera. But in 1914, this filmmaker managed to pull something off that no one else could do at the time. He used the dolly to move the camera across the set to create a more dynamic and immersive experience. And I do think for 1914, this is incredible. Now, here's the fun part of the video. Let's talk about movies that actually were taken in one long take. Boiling Point is a great example of a genuine one-shot film. Okay, well they didn't ask very well done. The best very well done. That's lamb, darling. Okay. That's how it's supposed to be. It's yeah. supposed to be all filmed in one location. No illusion or mimics. It's actually a long take. But wait, there's more. Russian Ark, the movie released in 2002, also didn't just create an illusion. It actually was a long take. The movie features an unbroken non-stop take that lasts around 90 minutes. The film moves through 33 rooms of the Russian State Museum, featuring over 2,000 actors and extras. And because the museum had to shut down for production, they only had one day to film the entire movie. And they attempted to do this four times. So the first three times they failed due to technical difficulties. But on the fourth attempt, they actually managed to do an actual long take. And of course, Victoria, which is the movie I mentioned earlier. This is, in my opinion, one of the most incredible achievements in film. A movie that's over two hours long was taken in one continuous take. I can't even wrap my head around how they managed to do that, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. This is incredible. I do think, again, no shade to 1917, but I do think like when movies like Victoria exist, why is no one talking about it? I mean, it was released in 2015, but still I feel like it's so underrated and so many more people need to watch this movie. So the German film is about a bank robbery or how the director likes to describe it is not about a bank robbery. He says it is a bank robbery because they do it in one take and it feels so immersive. You feel like you're actually robbing a bank. For Victoria, production had only three chances to make the one take happen. The director had a backup plan though, in case the one take didn't work out. And the backup plan was a jump cut version. Well, you know, people gave me money. Nobody believed that we're going to shoot, actually going to shoot the film in one take. So I told them if this, if I can't pull it off, I'm going to give you a jump cut version. Which according to the director didn't work at all. The material wasn't really built for a jump cut movie. The story was born to be shot in one take and they managed to do it. Unlike 1917, the cast and crew didn't actually rehearse for months and months. They wanted to have this element of freedom. I imagine on a set like for this kind of movie, you don't actually know what to do and what to rehearse. And as I said earlier, the dialogue was only 12 pages. Everything else was improvised. I think the entire movie is improvised. I'm pretty sure the cast didn't even read the dialogue. Film without even reading the 12 pages. It is boxing. Yeah, Franz. I, I didn't read. You didn't read it either? The 12 pages. They had no reference because not many people managed to do something or want to do something like this. Their starting point was just a bank robbery and they wanted to make something that was fascinating and engaging. A story about a bank robbery that truly felt like you were there with the characters. Now, it goes without saying that in order to do something like this, to create a movie all in one take from start to finish, is not easy. Preparation is the most important part of a project like this. Lots of rehearsals and calculations and planning and praying that it all works out. And especially if you don't have the same budget as Hollywood filmmakers like Sam Mendes, this is incredibly difficult. In my opinion, if you're gonna promote a movie as one long take, you better commit and make that happen and actually do one long take. We should give credit where credit's due. I think we should celebrate and we should recognize 
indie filmmakers who managed to pull off these incredible feats without a massive Hollywood budget. I think they deserve the spotlight too, if not even more. Thank you.